Hello and welcome to today's presentation on the cervix. Specifically, we are going to look at the squamocolumnar junction, the transitional zone, then look at ectropion and nabothian cyst. So on histology, we find the ectocervix, which is the portion of the cervix that lies exterior to the external os and is lined predominantly by non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. Now, in contrast, the endocervix is lined by a simple columnar epithelium that also secretes mucus. So, when we say squamocolumnar junction, it is where the ectocervix and the endocervix meet. So, the junction where they meet is what we call the squamocolumnar junction, and it is the most common site for human papilloma virus infection and cervical cancer. Now, on this diagram, we find the structure of the ectocervix, which is made up of the stratified squamous epithelium. And so, uh, as the name implies, stratified, and so it is found in layers, in strata. So, we start from the connective, connective tissue below then we have the basement membrane over here then we have the basal cells from there we have the parabasal cells we have the intermediate cells as well as the superficial cells and it moves on and on till we get to the exfoliating cells above in this diagram we find the normal endocervix and this normal endocervix forms or is formed by the columnar epithelium. And so it's composed of one layer of mucus secreting cells with few reserves. And so as the arrow is pointing, these are the reserves of the mucus secreting cells. So this is how the endocervix looks like histologically. And this is how, you know, we find the cervix or the endocervix. Now, the squamocolumnar junction is thus the boundary which is found between the squamous lined ectocervix and the columnar lined endocervix. So, on this diagram, we find uh, where the arrow is pointing to be the boundary between the squamous epithelium and the columnar epithelium. And you can find it also as the arrow is pointing over here. Here being the uh, columnar epithelium, then we have above it being the squamous epithelium. Now, what factors influence the squamocolumnar junction? Age and hormonal status play a major role in uh, the structure of the squamocolumnar junction. Now, at birth and during pre menarche years, we find that the squamocolumnar junction is very close to the external os and we refer to it as the original squamocolumnar junction. Now, during reproductive age, the squamocolumnar junction is located at different or variable distances from the external os. And in the postmenopausal woman, the new squamocolumnar junction is not visible and has receded into the endocervix. So, um, when we look at the transitional zone, it is the area between the original squamocolumnar junction and the new squamocolumnar junction, where the columnar epithelium, which is now the ectropion has been replaced by the new metaplastic squamous you know, epithelia. And so it is replaced by immature cells. And we usually find it as a distinct line after we apply 3 to 5% acetic acid. And so it will appear as a white you know, line. Now, the... Um, when we look at the diagram on our right, we find that this was where the old squamocolumnar junction was. So originally, this was where we had the squamocolumnar junction. 
But now we have the new schema columnar junction down here. And so the distance or the area which is between the old and the new schema columnar junction is what we call the transitional zone. And it's basically made up of immature schema columnar epithelium or squamous, you know, uh, epithelia cells. Also on this diagram, as uh, we can find, we find uh, uh, this area being the squamous epithelium, here being the columnar epithelium. So this place will be the squamo columnar junction. But this uh, indicates the transitional zone. So what are the importance of the squamo columnar junction and the transitional zone? The squamo columnar junction contains a lot of embryonic cells with different susceptibilities to infection by the human papilloma virus and therefore it involves uh, in malignant transformations. The transitional zone is the site of origin for more than 90% of precancerous lesions, which are also called cervical intraepithelia lesions and some cancers. And so the diagram on our right is showing the upper uh, layer of the stratified squamous epithelium and the inner layer of the columnar epithelium. Now, uh, what do we mean by ectropium? Ectropium is an inversion of the squamous columnar junction onto the ectoservice together with large portions of uh, columnar epithelium. Now, Progressively, through metaplasia, the ectropium is replaced by metaplastic squamous epithelium and the, meta, the, the, the metaplasia occurs as a reaction of the exposed everted columnar epithelium, which is the ectropium, to irritation by you know, the acidic vagina environment. Now, when we look at the diagram on our right, what we find in A is the ectropium, uh, which is uh, the columnar epithelium is now you know, visible on the surface of the cervix. So uh, as we said, the inner surface of the cervix or the endo cervix is made up of uh, columnar epithelium. And so now we are finding it being exposed to the outside surface of the cervix. And in B, we find a large ectropium with cervical polyp covering the external os. What is Nabothian cyst? Nabothian cyst is mucus-filled lump on the surface of the cervix, which is due to failure of metaplasia to progress into the glandular crypt. Now, stratified squamous epithelium of the vagina gradually grows towards the simple columnar epithelium of the uterus. And so, uh, what are the causes of Nabothian uh, cyst? In this condition, mucus secreting glands are covered with squamous epithelium, which leads to a buildup of secretions which plugs the glands, leading to smooth, rounded, you know, whitish, pimple-like bump on the cervix. In simple terms, uh, we say this is a cyst formed in the Nabothian glands of the cervix, and it's usually a normal finding in the, trans uh, the, the transformation zone during routine pelvic examination. Uh, and as I've uh, stated over here, it's usually white to yellow in color with, you know, normal branching vessels. Now, uh, there are no symptoms which are seen with Nabucian uh, cyst, but uh, sometimes very large cysts may cause menstrual discomfort. So how uh, do we diagnose Nabucian cyst? We can diagnose it uh, through pelvic examinations as well as the use of ultrasound and colposcopy as well as taking of biopsy. Then let's finally look at how to treat Nabothian cyst. Treatment is basically by both uh, electro and cryo freezing. And with electro uh, we apply heated probe to you know cut off the cyst 
and with cryofreezing, uh, the cyst is frozen with liquid nitrogen. So, uh, looking at the diagram on our right, we can find the cyst. You know, as you can see, some of them looks white, some of them looks uh, yellow, and you can see the branching vessels through it. Then also on this one, you can see a lot of the cysts which are covered up. You know, so the there is a buildup of the secretion in the field, you know, uh, the, the, the the Nabothian glands of the cervix. So as you can find over here. So basically, this is all that I have for you. Thank you very much for your time. Bye-bye.